All right, welcome back for the last part of One Man's Faith. I think we're finally getting to Sukkot and what it and and what it is. Uh, it has several it has several meanings. One we looked at it it it, it deals with the millennial reign. Okay, the thousand year reign. It's a time of jubilee. After, after repentance and atonement, now we come to a time of jubilee. It's, the, it's one feast or the feast that is different from the other feast in that it lasts more than seven days. It starts on the first day, on the 15th, uh, with a sabbatical, a sabbatical rest. Then there's festivities. It says you shall be festival. In other words, God in a sense is commanding it to be festival. And then it ends after the seventh day, which it ends after the seventh day with the eighth day being another day of rest, another sabbatical. It's the only, uh, it's the only feast that, that is set up that way. According to tradition, Moses ascended Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights to receive the second set of tablets. Now, if you'll go back and read Exodus 23, 24, right in there, or maybe 22, uh, Moses, um, God met him at Mount Sinai. He spoke the Ten Commandments to them. They didn't like it. They say, hey, that's a little too much for us. Let God speak to you and you speak to us. So, excuse me, Moses went up on the mountain for 40 days, got the rest of the commandments, and he got the download for the tabernacle. God says, I want to dwell with you. So here's what you're going to build for me so that I can dwell with you. When he came down, there was a golden calf incident. He got mad. He broke the tablets. Then God said, okay, I'll write them again, but you're going to bring up the tablets this time. And so there was a little bit of time, and he went up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, received the second set of tablets from God, and it's believed that he came back down on Yom Kippur. How about that? And he carried with them the sign of God's forgiveness between Israel and the sin of the golden calf. So that... It, that kind of started, so to speak, the, 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 atonement, the atonement process. When he came down, he said, okay, here, because he didn't have time the first time, he said, all right, here's what God wants us to do. And here's the thing he wants us to build. It's his dwelling place. And so it's believed that they started building on the tabernacle on Sukkot. Right. So Sukkot deals with dwelling, with God's dwelling with people. All right. It was it was it was in a sense that you can say symbolic. Uh, God was in their presence. He went with them. He covered them with a cloud by day and he had a fire by night so they could even walk at night if if it was required. But God dwelt with them, all right? He dwelt with them. He showed His manifest presence day and night with them for 40 years. He provided the cloud and He provided the fire at night. Wow. He did all those things. Now, uh, Isaiah. Let me see. Is it? Uh, let me, let me just cheat and look real quick here. In 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 Isaiah. Um, he talks about the coming. Millennial time. Oh, I lost it. I can't. I can't find. I can't find the reference that I that I need. Help me here, Lord. What's that? What's that? What's that reference? Um, uh, 
Well, okay, I guess I'm not supposed, oh, Isaiah 4. There it is, Isaiah 4. This is beautiful. For seven women will take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. In that day, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth will be the pride and adornment of the survivors of Israel. Okay? The branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth will be the pride and the adornment of the survivors of Israel. And it will come about that he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who is recorded for life in Jerusalem, recorded for life. Then the Lord has washed away the, the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the bloodshed of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. Then the Lord will create over the whole area of Mount Zion and over her assemblies a cloud by day, even smoke, and the brightness of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory will be a canopy. And there will be a shelter to give shade from the heat by day and refuge and protection from the storm and the rain. Now this is way after the wilderness experience. This is, this is indicative of, of the second coming and what is going to happen during this period. It says after he has washed away their filth, the atonement, okay, the end of the tribulation, the tribulation period, um, the Lord will create over Mount Zion a cloud by day, it's, and it's called a canopy. The word canopy here is, is, is chupa, which means, which deals with the canopy that's over a wedding feast, okay? The wedding of the Lamb occurs after, after the end of the, of the... Now, some believe that we're going to be taken away and we're going to go through the wedding feast during that seven-year period. So, uh, you know, if you go backwards, a year being a day, you know, most Hebrew weddings were seven days. So it's believed that it's going to be a seven-year wedding feast that's going to happen while things go downhill on earth, okay? Until, you know, until, until Jesus comes back. Okay, that's, you know, you know, that's a possibility. You know, you know, we don't, we don't know. Now, in, um, in uh, Zechariah, um, In, on Zechariah, um, we have we have a picture of the war that's going to happen. Okay, the war that's going to happen. But in verse sixteen, it says. Then it will come about in those that who are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. Zechariah 14, 16. Year to year they will go to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, the nations that are left and celebrate the Feast of Booths. And it will be that whichever of the families of the earth that does not go to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. And if the family of Egypt does not go up or enter, then no rain will fall on them. It will be a plague with which the Lord smites the nations who do not go up to celebrate 
the Feast of Booths. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations who do not celebrate the Feast of Booths. So it's a perpetual feast. During the millennial reign, we will be celebrating the Feast of Booths. The others are perpetual also. The Feast of Tabernacles, I mean, I mean the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, it, it says these are perpetual. Perpetual means forever. And so we right now are celebrating Sukkot. It, we're in that time frame. And so it's good to remember that, that our taking up to be with the Lord could very well be way before the start of the tribulation period. And the tribulation period, when it ends, will be followed by a celebration called the Feast of Booths, which, which assimilates with the millennial reign, the thousand-year reign. Now, the only way you're going to see that is to let Jesus be Lord of your life. If you don't let Jesus be Lord of your life, if you continue to live the life that you've been living and you're not giving Him first place in your life, then you're not going to see this millennial kingdom. You will not be a part of it. The only way is to let Jesus be Lord of your life. So I want to encourage you, let Him be Lord of your life. Claim Him today. The Bible says that he who confesses Jesus is Lord and believes in his heart that God raised him from the dead, he will be saved. So right now, you can say, Father, forgive me. Forgive my sins. Jesus, I accept you as Lord. Now I walk, I turn my life over to you, and I will walk the way that you want me to walk. I believe that you were raised from the dead by your Father. And I thank you that you have come to save me. And now is my time of jubilee. Heal me, deliver me, set me free, O oh God. And Lord, I pray that for everybody that's listening and does that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray you touch lives, bring healing, bring salvation right now, Father. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. And we'll get back to the names of God next week. All right? Bless you. <laughs>